the Srimad Bhagavatam explains one beautiful story. And our acharyas have given in their commentaries many wonderful realizations of this story. After Krishna left Mahavan, because Putana, Trinavarta, Shakatasura, Nalakuvaramani Griva, the twin Arjuna trees fell down. So many things were happening there that they were thinking, this is not a safe place. So Nanda and Yashoda with the other cowherd men, Upananda, Abhinanda, Nanda, they all decided we should go to the forest of Vrindavan. And near Bandiravan, Kamsa sent an asura in the form of a calf named Batsasura. And Krishna twirled him around and threw him on the ground. Maybe we'll discuss that another day. When the news came to Mathura that Krishna had killed Putana, Janavarta, Sakatasura, and now he's killed Vatsasura. Kamsa, his eyes began to flutter uncontrollably and he fainted. How is it possible for any small child to kill Vatsasura? He was immensely powerful. But then the ministers of Kamsa said, there's only one solution. We have to send Bakasura to kill him. And Kamsa became really enthusiastic. Bakasura. He is the cruelest. He is the cruelest of all the Asuras. And not only that, but he was Kamsa's best friend who was willing to live and die for Kamsa. So Kamsa was very enlivened, ecstatic. Yes, let us send Bakasura. So Krishna was herding his calves with the little gopas. They were in Kadiravan. The calves were jumping around and playing, and the children, gopas, were jumping around and playing in so many ways. And the boys were taking the, the calves to luscious, grassy areas to eat the grass and take them into these beautiful kuns to drink the crystal sparkling nectarine waters. And one day, after playing for many hours and drinking nice, refreshing water, they saw something that was extraordinary. It was never there before. Because Kadiravan was one of their favorite playing places. But now they were seeing this immense mountain. And it was like a white mountain. It was huge. And the boys were thinking, what could this be? This is bigger than Mount Kailash. But it seems to be moving. So they were with Krishna. They were fearless. And they were curious. So they started coming closer and closer, and they saw that it was breathing mountain. And they were talking amongst each other. They saw that he seems to have this long neck, and the neck is kind of down, and, and there's a massive, gigantic, razor-sharp beak. This is a massive bird. It's a crane. And as they came closer, Bakasura roared. And with his gigantic beak, he attacked. Krishna. In fact, he just closed his beak around Krishna and, and Krishna kind of jumped inside and he swallowed Krishna. When Krishna was inside this massive asura, the cowherd boys, even Balaram, fainted. They were in total anguish. Now, Balaram is the supreme personality of Godhead. He knows that Krishna's undefeatable. He knows that whatever this asura must be is just Krishna's insignificant material energy. 
Later on, we read, when Balaram saw Krishna in the coils of Kaliya, he said, I'm an Antashesha. I'm a bigger snake than this. <laughs> Krishna never plays with me like this. This Kaliya is nothing but an insignificant little water snake. That's Balaram. But Bakasura, everything happened so sudden. Kaliya, Balaram could see Krishna. But suddenly Krishna was gone. He was inside the body of Bakasura. All the cowherd boys swooned and cried along with Balaram and fell to the ground unconscious. Krishna, who was in his throat, Baka's throat, he began to radiate his effulgence, the Brahma Jyoti. And it was extremely hot. It was burning, burning Bakasura's throat. And not only that, Krishna, he was, he was playing. He was expanding himself, gigantic in the throat, then contracting himself, small, then expanding, then contracting and expanding and contracting. And meanwhile, he was burning hot. And Bakasura was like... <laughs> he was in such pain. He was being tortured. He was screaming. He couldn't even scream because he couldn't get any air out of his throat. Krishna was going... Doo, 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 and the heat... His heart was about to burst with pain. His eyes were bulging. And Bakasura was in such a state. With all his might, he was trying to spit Krishna out. And with his wings, he was jumping up and down, flapping, 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 flapping as hard as he could, trying to get that inertia to spit Krishna out, but he couldn't get Krishna out. Then by Krishna's own sweet will, he came out of Bakasura's beak. A great miracle. Because as he came out, all kinds of saliva and other stuff came out with him. But Krishna's clothes and his garland and his ornaments and his hair was just perfectly fresh. And there wasn't a single touch of any of the saliva or blood or vomit or anything else that was coming out along with him. And he started dancing. And Bakasura wanted to kill him. So he took his razor sharp beak. And Krishna was dancing around as he was doing. And then he, lift, he opened up his mouth again to try to crush Krishna with his beak. And meanwhile, all the gopas were watching this. You see, as long as he was in the mouth of Bakasura, the gopas were unconscious. But as soon as he came out, they came back to consciousness. And Krishna effortlessly, with his little hands, he took one side of Baka's beak and another, and... Srila Prabhupada said he bifurcated. <laughs> <All right. laughs> and Bakasura was like two twin mountains laying next to each other. Krishna kind of ripped them up in half. <laughs> Just like... And when that happened, all the demigods who were practically unconscious themselves during this ordeal, they collected tremuli flowers and jasmine flowers from the heavenly planets, the best flowers, and they were showering the them upon Krishna. And the cowherd boys were clapping and jumping and saying, well done, well done, and they were all coming and embracing Krishna, and Krishna was smiling. And when they all went back to Vrindavan that day, the gopas were so excited, they couldn't stop talking about how Krishna killed Bakasura. And Yashoda Mai, the cowherd man and the gopis, they were astounded to hear it. But Yashoda Mai, she said to Krishna, she said, Krishna, it's, it's, it, 
It just fills my heart with wonder that you're killing these demons. But we left Mahaban because of these demons. And it seems like wherever we go and wherever we take you, these demons attack. So Krishna, it's not safe for you. You're my child. You don't have to herd the calves or the cows. Actually, Nanda Maharaj, just so many people. From now on, you will stay home with me and I will protect you. I can't bear the thought of you going out there. And Krishna smiled at his mother and he said, all these stories of my heroic deeds are all lies. There is never any demons that come into me. I'm going out to hurt my calves. And you showed him, I said, whatever makes you happy, my Krishna. Bakasura represents cunningness, one of the great obstacles, one of the great obstacles to pure devotional service is duplicity, that cunning behavior, which means we put ourselves in the center of our lives. And once we put ourselves in the center of our lives and keep us there instead of Krishna and Seva, then the mind could justify anything. To be deceitful, to be untruthful, to even tell lies, about others, to even be duplicitous and deceitful, to try to bring other people down, to hurt other people, to make my position stronger. This is cunningness. That tendency is the presence of Bakasura. Krishna has appeared within his name to rip that demon of Bakasura out of our heart. We are praying for pure devotional service. And we're crying, crying to Krishna to free us from these anartas as we chant his holy name. Listening to Radhanath Swami on devotionalnectar.com.